yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. National Museum of the Pacific War located in Fredericksburg, Texas. If you can hear me from all the cars here on the street. But Karen and I are going to go to um, what has really been recommended to us is really an outstanding museum here in Fredericksburg. So you might ask yourself, why in the heck is the National Museum of the Pacific War here in of all places Central Texas? That's because of this man right here, Chester Nimitz, was born in Fredericksburg. In fact, his uh, boyhood home is only a block or two away from here. And this building right here used to be a hotel and it was called the Nimitz Hotel owned by his father and his grandfather. So that's why they've got the um, National Museum of the Pacific War here and they've got the Chester Nimitz Gallery. So we're going to go inside and we're going to check it out along with my faithful cameraman who's holding the camera. <laughs> Give me this. Open on January 1st, 1983, the National Museum of the Pacific War encompasses one entire city block of the hill country of Central Texas in the community of Fredericksburg. The museum is not just a tribute to Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz, who commanded all Pacific Naval Forces in the Pacific Theater during World War II, but to all branches of the U.S. Armed Forces, who for four years fought, sacrificed, and even died, liberating nations across the Pacific from the tyrannical regime of Tojo's imperialistic Japan. The museum takes you through the events leading up to the war, starting off in the mid-1800s with the Western colonization of Asia, the Sino-Japanese war with Russia, Japan's invasion of Korea and China, the attack on Pearl Harbor, the initial defeats of Allied forces, including the fall of Corregidor and the Bataan Death March, and the turning point of the war, which occurred at a little unknown island at that time called Midway. You'll see mock-ups of Little Boy and Fat Man, the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the decisions that led up to using such weapons. There is even one of the original Japanese midget submarines used in the initial attack on Pearl Harbor on display, which is really quite amazing. So join Karen and I as we take a journey through time and pay tribute to the heroes of the Pacific Campaign during World War II. so many years we achieved so much prospered as no other people on earth it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth the price for this freedom at times has been high but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. 
each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bellow Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Pork Chop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Treptow, who left his job in a small town barber shop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy artillery fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. On the flyleaf, under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. We will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. The time is 7.55 a.m. on 11 May 1945. The destroyer USS Hugh W. Hadley is north of Okinawa. Her mission? To protect ships and troops from Japanese aircraft. Uh-oh. Will you look at this? Bogies. A lot of them. What's the range? It looks about 85 miles. In the darkness of the CIC, the Combat Information Center, the radar man has just spotted a group of unidentified aircraft perhaps 85 miles away. The CIC officer immediately reports to the bridge. Bridge, combat. Bridge, aye. Large group of bogies approaching, bearing 355, about 85 miles. We want to send forward the cap out to investigate. Do you agree? Aye, aye, send them. Viceroy 11, Viceroy 13, Tango Base. Large group of unidentified aircraft approaching, Vector 355, estimated Angels 8. There's another group coming. How far away? It looks like about 80 miles. How big? I don't know. Hey, this is the second museum we've been to since we started Blue Line RV Adventures. The first one, I think, was the National Military National Museum of Military Vehicles uh, in Wyoming. And I'm just in awe. These are incredible, incredible places to visit. Um, yeah, I think both Phil and I really enjoy um, military history, military information, and these museums that we're um, coming across have been really spectacular gems and this is the um, Museum of uh, Museum of the Pacific. Yeah, Museum of the Pacific. Sorry. National Museum of the Pacific, yes. Um, however, it, it focuses on Chester Nimitz and the campaign underneath his command. Because Chester Nimitz was born in Fredericksburg, probably yep. a thousand yards from here, um, he, the museum is is um, based here, and it is a 
beautiful installation that had um, very specifically the um, campaign, the Pacific campaign underneath Chester Nimitz. But this, uh, this is a great museum, just very much focused on the Pacific campaign. Yeah, Karen's exactly right. If you, we, we still highly recommend going to the uh, military, uh, military Vehicle Museum in Wyoming. And again, but that's going to cover the whole history of warfare, I think, with the U.S., starting basically in World War One, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I know that when we left, they were working on uh, segments for both the Korean War, Cold War, and Vietnam War. That's still kind of under construction. But really, really a great museum. This, just like Karen said, really focuses on the Pacific Theater and um, really an amazing museum. One of the things that was really shocked was they actually have inside one of the actual midget submarines that was recovered, the Japanese midget submarines, that was recovered uh, from Pearl Harbor is actually inside the building here, along with a couple of aircraft. Yeah, I think and, there were four or five. Yeah, I think there were four and or five. I think and the one that's here is the only one surviving that campaign. I think so, yes. And the other thing that was really interesting is they've actually have um, really some articles of clothing and uh, paraphernalia, things they've collected from various battles that they've got um, spread out in like a, a shadow box. And then they've got like a little map, but there's like a shadow box with these different items and paraphernalia in there. And then they talk about where these items were recovered at. And some of them are actually from specific people in those specific battles. Like there's one, there's a Navy uh, sailor's uh, top where it's got grease and oil stains put on. It's got the name of the sailor that was there. There's paraphernalia from, well, I'm not sure what's so funny about this, but it's, it's so cute. I'm sorry. What's, what's so he cute? He can't I'm, stop <laughs> talking with his hands. <laughs> okay, Karen is saying I'm part Italian because I'm always talking with my hands. It's very Wendy's. distracting, right? So, so, no? so I don't think it's distracting at all, but I'm gonna put my hands on my pocket. So they have <laughs> shadow boxes as I was talking about, and they have like a, a sailor's uh, top and it's got oil stains on it and things like that. And it talks well, about- I mean, there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's so much history that is contained in the museum and in each installation within the museum. The campaign, they go by campaigns. Um, oh gosh, they do the Okinawa um, campaign, they do Guadalcanal, they feature um, Iwo Jima. They've, these, these battles within the Pacific campaign are all um, highlighted. They have a beautiful installation in there about Midway. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, the, it's yes. really informative. But uh, it's really interesting because they actually have like, if you look at the Doolittle Raid, they have a shadow box for the Doolittle Raid and they have pieces of paraphernalia and things like that from some of the people that are in the Doolittle Raid. So it's really interesting. And then of course, like what Karen was just saying, it takes you through every major aspect of the Pacific War, including leading up to the Pacific War. It talks about um, the conflict between China and Japan all the way back in the 1800s. It talks about the Opium Wars and the Boxer Wars and things like that. So, and it, it explains it in such a way that it's easy to understand. There's a lot of videos in there and movies and narration, and it's pretty easy to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so again, we really highly recommend this. Fredericksburg, Texas, the, if I get the name right, if, if I get the name wrong, I'll put it on top here, but I think it's the National Pacific War Museum, Pacific National War Museum. You should probably know these things. I should, we should probably know these things. It's actually yeah. split up into two sections though. This is the George H.W. Bush section, which is one of our presidents, former presidents. But this is the George H.W. Bush um, uh, section of the museum. And the other one is the Nimitz Gallery. And of course, George H.W. Bush was a veteran of the Navy. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's cold. We're going home. We're going home. Now we're going to grab some lunch because it's cold. And as you can tell by the weather out here, it's a little gloomy and cloudy. And that's why we're going to a museum today. <laughs>